Page 8, Garden of the Stars. Reading in three staffs. Oh, this will be fun. Oh, goody. As if two staffs wasn't enough. You run across this sometimes in piano, and you'll see that little curly brace at the beginning that identifies it as a grand staff. Well, it covers all three of these. So, here we go. Because, yeah. They could get all the notes in two staffs and make it work, but it tends to complicate the notation quite a bit. It's just easier to lay out, and it's easier to see what's going on if they split it into three stabs, even though you think, now i got to keep track of three stabs. Well, we'll work through it. What they've done here is the middle staff happens to be the melody. Bring out the melody, bring out the middle staff. Now, the right hand, and they have the... It, labeled at the beginning of the stas, and they're just be doing that to be nice. Usually they don't say anything, it's up to you to figure out what to do. But the, you see the right hand is going to cover that middle staff. So the right hand is going to play the melody, it, that's nothing new, we do that some. And then the left hand gets to do the other two stas. Yay, left hand, we love it, don't we? So as far as the melody goes at the beginning, 4-4 four, four time, key is C major, no sharps or flats, except of course for the accidentals here. They're saying third finger on that C, and then a two, one, three, one. It's sort of a chromatic fingering, sort of. I personally don't care for it. I would prefer to just start on a little finger on the C, and then just go down. I don't have to cross over the thumb at all. Just four, three, two, one. It just falls nicely. And then the next measure, go ahead and use their fingering. And then fourth finger or fifth finger on the F doesn't matter. You got to go down to the B, and then you're going to lift up. It's the end of a phrase, so lift up and move up. And again, I use fifth finger on that, so the second line's about like the first, as far as the melody goes. Then on page nine, you're here. Remember, this is all bass clef. Did I mention that? Mm -hmm. Just reach up and then follow their fingering. Again, now I'm treating these, the first line, each of these two measures is two separate phrases, like they've got the slurs, so I'm going to lift up before I go on. But I don't treat, and this starts at the beginning too, I didn't point it out, they've got the tide and then they've got the slur covering the eighth notes. I don't separate the tied notes from the eighth notes. It's all connected as one phrase. So at the top of page nine and the third major where I am, it's here. Connect this and keep connect all the way to the end. And all of these phrases do it the same way. Connect it. Second line, go up to the F. Now we get it here. Watch this. Now you gotta go down here and you're gonna connect it. Well that's a stretch. You can, if you want, if it'll help, is put the thumb on the D. What finger you use on the E is not important, it's up to you. But put the thumb on the D, so you can cross over with the fourth finger on the C, and that makes it easier to reach the E. And this is, the whole second line is one long phrase, connect the whole line. measure over there on the second F, I use a fourth finger on that because it makes it easier for me to reach that low A. And then a fourth finger on the E. And then I can do a third if I want, or fourth finger again, it doesn't matter. Then you lift up, it's the end of a phrase for the last line. Same as before, if you want, when you can use the thumb on the D. Fourth finger on the C, if it helps you. I mean, if your hand's big enough, then you don't need to. Just play it straight out. Their fingering is fine and to the end. Well, that's the melody. That's the easy part. Now the fun part. Left hand. Left hand's going crazy. Starts out. The first note the left hand gets is in the bottom staff, bass clef, you're down here on the C. Then the two notes in the top staff, that's left hand two, treble clef, you're up here. 
so you're going here and there's no rest in there it's like one two three and then you get a rest on beat four then the next measure it's an E down here and this is what the left hand is doing throughout this thing it's going back and forth so the first line is like one two three four one two three four one two three four Fortunately, the right hand isn't really moving around, so you can focus more on the left hand. The problem is going to be the right hand tends to be in the way. Watch at the beginning when I put them together. If I'm here, well, it's not in the way there, but stick around. Here. Now lift up the left hand on beat four. So it's one, two, three. Right when I play the A, the left hand comes up. See, if I use their fingering on one three, the hands are on top of each other. So, instead of the fingering they're suggesting for the left hand there in the second measure, three one, because the right hand is here, sort of, you might want to play those notes in the left hand with five three, just to get the left hand up out of the way a little more. So, think about that fingering, you know, their fingering is a suggestion in a way, and, and sometimes, I mean, if the left hand plays by itself, yeah, this is wonderful, but when you add the right hand into the mix, it doesn't work so well. So you may want to change the fingering for the left hand here. I use five and three because it gets the hands out of the way. Then you can go on. So sometimes the hands are far enough apart you don't have to worry about it, but when they're close together you've got to consider that too. So when you're working out fingerings on these, you're doing it one hand at a time, but you may have to adjust it when you put the hands together. Mm. And then you may have to adjust it again if it's a fast piece and you have to start speeding it up. Because sometimes a fingering you use in a slow piece doesn't work in a fast piece. It takes a different one. That's a whole other adventure there, but right now I'm kind of helping you with the fingering. But the idea is for you to learn the fingering styles kind of get an idea of how they're doing what they're doing so that when you have other pieces you want to learn you have at least a fighting chance of figuring out what the fingering is and so the left hand is doing this all over the place it's just going back and forth so you're you're looking at the music looking down looking at the music looking down and you'll have to work out a way to do that because the beats got to go on the beat cannot stop so Fortunately, this is a fairly slow piece anyway. Cantabile is a singing style. It's not a speed. It's a singing. But, so it's a one, two. So you work out the going back and forth between the stabs. Now, work all that out. Mm -hmm. You want to start getting into the dynamics you will, I'll talk about those in a minute. But I want to add the pedal, because that adds another layer of complexity. Notice I've done all this without pedal. We've got enough to think about without the pedal getting in the way. It's easier to hear the notes without the pedal smearing them up. At the beginning, we are pedaling the melody half note tied to the eighth note. So it's two and a half beats. We're not pedaling the eighth notes coming down. We don't want to smear any of that. It's got to be clean. And it's that style throughout this piece. So I'm going to push the pedal down right after I play the notes at the beginning. And we'll play the other notes. And as I play the B, the eighth note B in the right hand, I release the pedal right there. Same thing. First line is legato pedal, that one. And then I'm going to lift the pedal with the hands, it's the end of a phrase. And that's pretty much the pedaling. Occasionally you get legato pedaling, like the last measure of the first line on page 8. There, um, it's here, and then change the pedal at the, um, play the notes first and then change the pedal that one. You get the same thing at the bottom of the page, the last measure on page 8. There you can legato pedal that one. 
Over on page 9, the second major of the first line, your legato pedal, the last major legato pedal. Hopefully you can see the, this pattern, the notes and the rhythm. You can legato pedal those. Then at the bottom on page 9, the last three measures or so, you're legato pedaling all of that. So just push the notes down and then the pedal. You'll smear these eighth notes a little bit. We'll allow that sometimes. Change the pedal right after you play the notes, every two beats. Bring out the melody. And then at the end, the hands and the pedal all come up at the same time at the end of the four counts. You know how it works. It's the way the game is played. All right. Add the end of the dynamics and all. I've talked about phrasing already. At the beginning, the mezzo forte is the you know that's the melody. Everything else is under. So you're sort of loud here. You'll have to decide how loud that is. Just make sure you can hear the melody. Now here you have a swell. I'm going to come to here. You want to go on to here and then cut back down. So then in the second line it's similar to the first except now the melody is soft so everything else has to be even softer than that. It's like an echo. So the first line is here and the second line is here. Gentle. Now the swell then come back down and then at the top of page nine we're medium loud again, we're here, and here we have a swell to the half note F in the second measure. To here, and come back off. Same thing in the next two measures. Get, go to here, then back off, and then in the second line on page nine, now you're loud. This is like the climax of the piece. This is where we mean business here. I don't know what's going on for sure. We look for the little things, and I admit I miss a lot of little things. I've always had that problem. We do the best we can, huh? Well, you notice on page eight, when you have a half note in the melody, the pedal is down for the two and a half counts for that half note. But on page nine, when you have quarter notes, they want you to pedal each of the quarter notes. So it's here. That's a whole different tone, and you'll have to decide what you want to do here. If you pedal each note, you're going to lose the G here. If you hold it down for the first two, the two counts, like it's a half note, like you did the pedaling on page eight, you'd hold it down longer, it's, you'll keep the G. The sound's different. And what they're saying is they don't want that. They don't want both of those notes at the same time. And so they're changing the pedal here on the second line on page 9. So watch that. Now on the third measure on page 9, I would on the second line, I would not pedal that third measure at all. I, I, we don't need it. Just legato. So it's here. Then your legato pedal the last measure. So the whole line there on the second line on page nine is there. And I stayed loud the whole line. Then in the last line, now you're down to a sort of soft here. And you're you're pet you're pedaling each beat here too. It's like an echo, it's just not quite as soft. And then at the end, I die away. They don't say anything, but I die away. And maybe even slow down a little bit. That's an interpretive thing. First you learn it the way it's written, and then once you get to know it and you, you can get into the music, then you can start interpreting it if you want to slow down a little or if you want to get louder or softer if you feel that in the music then go for it. It's like at the beginning in this melody thing. 
I could just play the notes. Or I could try and make it flow. So here, and I want to feel like it's sort of flowing. It's sort of like the swell at the last two measures I'm doing in, in the others, but not as much. It's just a little bit. And that would be the feeling I get on this perhaps. It's a beautiful piece. I highly recommend it. Try it out.